And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. We're here today with the third game in the Mystery Rummy series, which is going to be Mystery Rummy Jekyll and Hyde. I can't find the box, so you're not going to see it, but it's just a small box game. Uh, usually, probably going to take it out and carry it around without the box. It consists of a set of rules and a deck of cards, which we'll go over in just a moment. Uh, so why don't we take a look at what you get. The first thing you get, as I mentioned, is a set of rules. Um, it's a one-sheet rule book. It's, it's kind of large. It's printed on what looks like an 8.5 by 11, maybe a little bit bigger sheet of paper. Uh, and these aren't nearly as badly organized as some of the other Mystery Rummy rules, but they're not quite perfect yet either. Uh, they might require a little bit of a focus when reading them, or maybe a couple reads in order to get down right. But they're, they're a lot better than the uh, Jack the Ripper rules. They're a lot better than maybe um, the Al Capone rules. But they are not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. The second thing that Mystery Rummy Jekyll and Hyde comes with, of course, is a deck of cards. Uh, you can see that they're very colorful. Um, the artwork's not fantastic, but it's not terrible. Uh, but one thing that really needs to be mentioned about these cards is that they're very stiff and difficult to shuffle. Uh, you're not going to be able to shuffle these uh, very well with a riffle shuffle. You might need to pile shuffle. You might need to, to you know, kind of do a little bit of that in order to get them mixed up well. Um, but riffle shuffling can be a real challenge even for somebody who's an uh, avid card player. Mystery Rummy Jekyll and Hyde, again, is a game based on the classic card game Rummy, uh, with a few extra twists thrown in with the cards. Um, the first is this card that the game kind of centers around, and this is called the Dual Identity Card. On one side, there's a picture of Dr. Jekyll, and of course, on the other side, a picture of Mr. Hyde. Now, the game starts with Dr. Jekyll facing up, and this is going to be the key focus of how you're going to earn points in the game, is by playing melds, of course, just like Rummy, but using cards that are either focused towards Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde, and flipping this card at the appropriate time before the hand ends. The dual identity card will stay out throughout the entire game and be manipulated by players to best earn points at the end of the game. However, in order to earn points, you must first meld cards. Let's take a look at the evidence cards you can meld in order to score points and how they work. There are actually three types of evidence cards, and those three types are first, hide cards. You can see that this is an evidence card because there's a spyglass in the upper left-hand corner of the card. You can also tell that it's a hide-specific card because there's an H underneath the spyglass. These cards can only be played when the hide face is face up. The second type of cards available for play are Jekyll cards. Again, it's an evidence card shown by the spyglass in the upper left hand corner, and it's particular to Jekyll, meaning it can only be played when the Jekyll is face up on the identity card. Finally, for evidence cards, there are both Jekyll and Hyde identity cards. These cards show both a J and an H beneath the spyglass, and can be played no matter what face of the card is up on the identity card. Much like the other mystery Romy card games, Jekyll and Hyde includes another type of card called Gavel cards. And you can see there are three different types included in this game, which is less than some of the other games, but still, uh, these fit thematically with the game pretty well. These are going to allow you to either draw cards or change some type of aspect of the game, uh, particularly flipping the identity cards so that you can play different types of melds. You can see that these are gavel cards as indicated by the gavel listed in the upper left hand corner of each of the, of the cards, and that they score points for both Jekyll and or Hyde at the end of the round. The first card, the work and lab card, allows you to look at either the top three cards of the deck or all of the discard pile, and take one card matching the face up identity on the identity card, placing it into your hand. This card stays in play and scores points for either Jekyll or Hyde at the end of the round. It'll score one point. The second card, the Potion card, allows you to flip over the Identity card to its other side, in this case flipping from Jekyll to Hyde. Doing this will allow you to play Hyde melds on your turn, which is a benefit if you're trying to get Hyde cards out into play out of your hand. Additionally, the Potion will allow you to draw two cards from the top of the case file, meaning the deck, and place them into your hand. The final card is the Transformation card, which allows you to take a player's meld by playing this card on it and switch it from either a Jekyll to a Hyde meld or a Hyde to a Jekyll meld. This is important at the end of the round, as face-up cards matching the face-up identity will score double points. 
On a player's turn, they have the option of either drawing one card from the draw deck or from the discard pile, and this is mandatory. They must do so. Let's say I draw the blue card from the top of the deck, placing it into my hand. Next on my turn, I have the option of playing any amount of evidence cards and one gavel card, so long as I have at least three of the same type of evidence card and they match the face-up identity on the identity card. So, for example, since Jekyll is face-up, I can meld my four blue cards in my hand that match the Jekyll identity. In addition, I mentioned that you can play at least one gavel card. So, for example, I may play the gavel card from my hand, the potion, that allows me to flip Dr. Jekyll to Mr. Hyde and draw two cards from the deck. Since Hyde is now face up, I may play another meld so long as it matches the Hyde side of the card. So I'll play my purple cards with the H on the evidence card, showing that they match Hyde and placing those into play. In doing so, I have played 14 points worth of cards, or if the Hyde card is face up at the end of the round, these cards will be worth double. The last thing you must do is discard one card from your hand to the discard pile. The hand will end when one player has discarded their last card to the discard pile and points will be scored. Here we see a mid-game condition for Mystery Rummy Jekyll and Hyde. On this side we have the player who has melded four blue cards of Jekyll and three red cards of Hyde. However, the opposing player has played a transformation card on the Hyde meld, effectively switching it to a Jekyll meld. The other player has played three Hyde cards in purple and three car Hyde cards in yellow, meaning they have all Hyde cards on their side of the table. As you can see, the Hyde card is currently face up, so not only could only Hyde melds be played, but if the round were to end currently, one player would have all Hyde cards on the table. This would result in a shutout for that player, who would score double points and would be the only player to score for that round. The game will continue with players melding cards, putting them into play, switching Jekyll from Hyde, Hyde to Jekyll, drawing more cards, uh, until one player finishes hands and has a total score of 100 points or higher, and that player will be the winner. Now, I forgot to mention in my previous rules explanation that you may also play cards off of your opponent's melds, uh, meaning that if they have a meld in play, you can take cards from your hand that match that meld and play them onto your side of the table so long as the appropriate identity is face up. This allows you to score a couple more points, get cards out of your hand, and hopefully get you closer to discarding your last card and going out. Um, at the end of the round, you will also score negative points for any cards left in your hand. All of that covered, uh, Mystery Rummy Jekyll and Hyde just doesn't do the same thing for me as Jack the Ripper did. It's more basic, it seems to me. There's less going on, there's only three different types of evidence card, or, uh, sorry, three different types of gavel cards, and it's always best to play your gavel cards in the way that hurts your opponent the most. So, if they have all Hyde cards out, you're going to want to make sure they have at least one Jekyll meld, uh, so that they don't shut out once the game is over. Um, it's always best to have as many of your own types of cards matching the face-up card as possible. There's really not many strategic choices, and Mystery Rummy Jekyll and Hyde just doesn't do it for me. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. What?